On October 25th, Deepak Paintel's application for environmental release of a transgenic mustard hybrid, which he developed in 2002, was approved by the Union Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. This means that the genetically modified GM mustard, named Dhara Mustard Hybrid, can be grown in open fields for trials, demonstrations and for seeds, before it is approved for commercial cultivation. On October 31st, Trilochan Mohapatra told the media that the Indian Council of Agricultural Research would conduct the field trials in the next 10-15 days in Rajasthan, Haryana, Punjab, Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh at 100 locations to verify the yield. On November 2nd, a group of farmers, researchers and activists assembled under the Coalition for a GM-Free India and moved the Supreme Court after which ICAR decided to put the field trial on hold. Why is the government pushing for GM mustard? In 2021, India imported 13.35 million tonnes of oils to meet the demand, which cost 1,17,000 crores. By 2025-26, India will need 34 million tonnes of edible oils, which will put a significant pressure on the country's foreign exchange reserves. Mustard contributes 40% of total edible oils production in India, while soya bean and groundnut account for 18% and 15% respectively. Today, mustard is grown in 8 million hectares with 1 to 1.3 tonnes yield per hectare. The government claims that transgenic seeds could potentially raise the yields to 3 to 3.5 tonnes per hectare while being resistant to pests that cause white rust a common disease of mustard. Since the DMH-11 plant is self-pollinating, genetic manipulation prevents problems faced in cross-breeding and directly changes the genetic makeup of a plant. However, DMH-11 has been opposed by the Coalition for a GM-Free India. This is because of the introduction of foreign genetic materials in the crop. What is the issue with genetic modification? According to Kavita Kuruganti, the government agencies have ignored the effect of GM mustard on honeybees and other pollinators and have bypassed biosafety protocols. On November 4th, over 100 beekeepers from Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh and Haryana gathered at the ICR Mustard Research Institute in Bharatpur to demand withdrawal of the environmental clearance for GM mustard. Earlier, farmers used to rely on sunflower, cotton, sorghum, pearl millet corn, sesame, pigeon pea and chana crops for rearing honeybees and used to harvest honey for eight months in a year. Today, mustard is the only crop that bee farmers depend on. Hybrid crops have already resulted in fewer flowering days, reducing honey harvesting season to less than three months a year and affecting production. Farmers claim that GM mustard will cause further drop in honey production. When BT cotton was introduced, during the initial years, honey was harvested twice in a season. Over the years, the flowers stop yielding nectar. Mustard honey crystallizes quickly and makes exporting to the US and EU feasible. But these countries also demand GM-free certification. Almost half of the 150,000 tons of honey produced in India is exported under non-GMO verification programs. The future of apiculture export will be threatened if GM mustard receives commercial approval, according to honey exporters. What are scientists fearing? Botanists say that pests and insects may grow resistant to the transgenic crop after a decade or so, triggering the need for newer versions of the seeds. Additionally, honeybees could transfer the genes of GM mustard to other plants, which may lead to horizontal and undesirable gene transfer among plants, causing the growth of unwanted and invasive weeds. Apart from white rust, the mustard crop is also prone to other diseases. On October 31st, the government claimed that GM mustard is not released as a herbicide-tolerant crop. But the herbicide under question, glufosinite ammonium, will be sprayed on the final hybrid seed formed. The difference between a transgenic or GM crop and a hybrid plant is that while the former contains external DNA, the latter only contains DNA from both parents via fertilization. DMH-11 is a transgenic hybrid crop. When glufosinite ammonium is sprayed, if the progeny is GM and hybrid, it will survive. However, 
if the hybrid is not successfully formed, the seed will die due to herbicides. Either way, this dangerous herbicide will enter the food system and its health impacts on human health and the natural ecosystem are not yet fully deciphered. There are also no long-term studies in the Indian context on the metabolic impact of Barstar and Barna's genes on the human and animal body. Why do we need long-term studies for this? In November 2009, an article said that the protein in Bt brinjal, which was approved in 2009, was toxic for all organisms. In 2011, researchers from the University of Sherbrooke Hospital in Canada analyzed maternal and fetal exposure to pesticides associated with GM foods. They found Bt toxin in blood circulating fetuses. Do we really need GM mustard in India? The yield of any crop depends on its genotype environment and management, with the latter playing around 80% of the role. According to ICAR, DMH11 will have an average yield advantage of 28% over its parent, Varuna. But India already has non-GM hybrid varieties that yield up to 3200 kgs per hectare. If the system of mustard intensification method is used, the yield can go up to 4200 kilograms. The yield of the traditional mustard crop in the last 40 years has increased by over 300 percent, from 478 kgs to 2 tons per hectare. The oilseed production in India doubled from 11 million tons to 22 million tons in the 1990s, after the launch of oilseed technology mission in the 1980s, which happened without any GM crop. Comparing GM mustard with other high-yielding varieties will reveal its poor performance. In 2020, biosafety research field trials of two transgenic varieties of indigenously developed Bt brinjal were allowed by 2023 in eight states. GM cotton and maize seeds are still undergoing confined field trials in Karnataka. But we are yet to see concrete measures taken to establish the long-term safety and profitability of transgenic varieties.